Hey everyone, welcome into The Scoreboard. I'm your host, Blake Orulian. On today's show, we get an education from the Educational Foundation of Eagle, and we're getting geared up for the fall season with a look back at my interview with Eagle Valley Volleyball coach, Mike Garvey. We begin today's show with part one of that interview. Hey everyone, right now we are joined by head coach of Eagle Valley Volleyball, head coach Michael Garvey. Coach, thank you so much for being here today. You bet, thanks for having us. Of course, hey, and so, it's currently the off season, and I wanted to ask you a little bit about how this summer's been going. How is preparation going into this 2022 season? Uh, so far, so good. Uh, it's actually been uh, my third year as the head coach and uh, hopefully my first normal year with uh, no COVID. So last summer was a short summer. Uh, obviously, the one prior to that was uh, interesting with all of our COVID regulations not being able to be in a gym. So uh, we had our freshmen come in in the beginning of May when they can first join us and ran through till the end of school. And now we're just getting ready to ramp back up again for the summer. Yeah, you mentioned it's your third season as the head coach. And I wanted to ask you a little bit about what are some of the things that you've learned? It's been kind of a roller coaster considering that COVID has been happening the entire duration that you've been there. And so I wanted to ask you, what are some of the things that you've learned as a coach uh, because of all of the different things that have been going on? Yeah, you know, I, I felt really fortunate. This was uh, my 25th season coaching and uh, really just fortunate that I had some background in coaching and background in working with kids and so forth. So that when this wrinkle was thrown at us, uh, we were able to handle it and it wasn't brand new for us. So uh, definitely had to keep an eye on um, our athletes emotions. Uh, it seemed that it didn't take a whole lot to get us rocked. Uh, we definitely had our time uh, both seasons. We had some time off with COVID with both coaches and players. And so it's just a good reminder to make sure that you're checking in with your athletes, that you know what their uh, mental state is and how they're doing. And um, just important that you know them as players. Yeah, 25 seasons coaching volleyball overall. And I wanted to ask you, we want to get to know the team, but we also want to get to know you. So could you tell us a little bit about your volleyball background as well? Sure. Uh, began playing in high school and uh, mostly then it was just kind of the beach and grass scene. So uh, just kind of get introduced to the sport that way. Uh, in college, again, continued uh, with kind of a love of the game, taking classes and being involved, playing and so forth. Got my first head coaching position uh, at Vail Mountain School and coached there for 18 seasons. Uh, then moved over to Eagle Valley and spent a couple years as the JV coach uh, and now as a head coach and have been coaching club since I believe 99. Um, so a little bit of a mixed bag all up here in the Vale Valley. So uh, my coaching experience is kind of limited to uh, the Vale experience, but it's been great. That is unbelievable. That's a very long time at one specific high school, too. How much did you learn from 18 years at one school? And possibly, if I may ask this, how long do you think you want to stay at Eagle Valley? Do you think you want to be there for 18 years as well? How much longer do you want to coach? Uh, right now, I don't see an end to it. Um, it was a little transition period between Vail Mountain School and Eagle Valley that kind of uh, refreshed me and let me know that I, I did want to continue coaching. Um, my daughter's coming into the program this year, so hope to at least stick out four more years with her. And um, I love it. I love coaching. I love working with kids. And so right now, uh, as I said, I, I don't see uh, I don't see any movement. So hopefully uh, they're at Eagle Valley for quite a while. Yeah, coach, you actually speaking of, of new players coming in, uh, realistically, players have to leave as well. Last season, you lost 10 seniors. And I wanted to ask you, how have the adjustments been made? And, and you know, when you have so many seniors that leave the program, it's kind of a tough thing for, for the new juniors and, and the sophomores of last year to kind of step up. How have they been adjusting to that uh, new change? You know, we mentioned it as we get going in the spring, uh, I kind of pull each uh, rising senior uh, off and kind of remind them of, you know, when you start to look around and you look for somebody to lead, uh, it's you that needs to step up. And so we've already started that process. Uh, we're going to a couple of team camps and we're going to do some scrimmages here uh, in, a, in a couple weeks. So this will be their opportunity uh, to rise up and kind of adjust into that role. We found in the past that uh, we do a lot of work with our teams mixing together. So they get to be with those previous seniors and they get to see their leadership. And many of them have already talked about uh, the leaders that they want to be. 
So it usually goes uh, pretty smooth. And it, it's just kind of a natural evolution of the next people and the, the next person. Welcome back to The Scoreboard. I'm your host, Blake O'Rooley, and up next is part two of my interview with Eagle Valley volleyball coach, Mike Garvey. I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about camps and things like that. Obviously, there is some sort of a summer camp getting prepared for the season itself. How have summer camps been going? Is there anyone that's really stuck out for you? Uh, you know, we really haven't gotten going yet. We've mostly had open gyms, and so it's been a, a, a mixed bag of young and old kids coming in. And uh, we get going, uh, we'll go up to uh, University of Northern Colorado here on the 14th of July and then to CSU. And uh, we've got Glenwood Springs and Battle Mountain coming over for a little scrimmage in a couple weeks. So uh, we're waiting to see uh, who's gonna step up and uh, who those leaders are gonna be. So um, that's kind of our goal in the summer is to start that process so that when we get started in the season, we're not uh, starting from square one, that we've kind of got the ball rolling and we know where we want to be on that first day of uh, practice. That'll be so interesting also to have your daughter in the program. Is she going to be on the varsity level or is she going to be on the JV or freshman level? No, she's uh, she's got to work to earn her spot just like everybody else. So um, we'll have uh, four teams this year, which will be new. And uh, I think as things go out, you know, I think she's just going to be happy to be a part of the program. Um, We've worked together in club. Uh, I've coached her as a club athlete, so it's not going to be new to us uh, working together, but uh, it's going to be interesting to have her in the program and, and see her every day uh, on the volleyball court as an athlete and not just uh, my daughter at home. Are there any other players that you know that are coming up right now through the club scene that you know are going to be on this team? Any players that specifically stand out that maybe the audience should uh, be checking out and making sure that, that they know who they are as the season kicks off? You know, I think we're fortunate to bring back a few players, um, you know, that played last year and played a uh, significant time. Uh, CJ Yersak and uh, Talia Crawford were both starters and, and, and played a ton. So they will be a big impact for us this year. Uh, but we've got, a, again, a number of other players that um, they played with us all season in practices um, that, again, are, are, I think are going to step right into those roles at, at the varsity level. You placed second in league for the last two seasons as a head coach, which is a very good feat considering how this team has kind of gone from, from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows over the last couple of years. So I wanted to ask you, where do you think this team can end up at the end of this season? Do you have high hopes to win league and maybe go as far uh, into a state championship or something like that? Uh, I definitely think this team um, can win the league. Uh, as you stated, we, um, we split with Palisade last year, who were the the league champs. Um, we took a loss to Glenwood, which uh, took us out of kind of a, a, a tie for that. And the season before, we only had one loss to Palisade. And in our short season, uh, that was all it took to, to not be the league champion. So we're right there uh, with those teams at the top of the league. Uh, I feel we bring back enough athletes uh, to compete again. And this year, you know, we, we've fallen short the last couple seasons to punch our ticket to the state tournament. And so that's definitely a goal this year is to take one more step and get ourselves to compete at the state tournament. What are some of the keys to get to the state tournament? Obviously winning games, but what are some of the specific things that you'd like this team to work on uh, throughout the season to get there to peak at the right moment? Sure. Um, I think the, you know, the one thing is, is, is keeping a good mindset. And we've done a great job of that the last couple seasons with the um, uh, issues at hand with with COVID and the different changes. Uh, this program did a really good job of making sure that that they knew where their head was. And so I think that's going to be another key this year is is always to be making sure that you're focused on the right things at the right time. Uh, when we look into the game itself and, and the skills, we need to continue to be a, a great serve and serve receive team. Again, a couple of our strengths uh, in the past season. And one thing that we've uh, already been focusing on this year is uh, a, a better hitting percentage. Uh, simply put, we made too many errors attacking last season. And so that's going to be a focus of ours this year. Well, Coach, thank you so much for the time. We really appreciate it. And good luck uh, for the rest of the summer as camps kick off. And also good luck for this regular season. We can't wait to continue to cover it. All right. Thanks for having us on. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.
Welcome back to The Scoreboard. We focus quite a bit on high school sports on this show, but there's so many elements of a well-rounded high school education, including music and the arts. Our own Maddie Evans recently had the chance to catch up with Educational Foundation of Eagle County to learn how they are supporting the youth in our community. We've always got such great programming taking place in our community for the children and right now School of Rock is about to kick off which is a ton of fun and I've got the experts in the space Jake Wolf and Wendy Reimel joining me on the couch. Good morning guys. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you both so much for being here. Thanks for having us. It's really cool what you guys do and EFFECT as an entire in our community does some really great work and you guys do a lot of incredible things to make sure that the kids here are living their best lives. Oh, that's that's. Oh, thank very you. Well that's said, such a right? compliment. <laughs> Just, good goosebumps. A little well, bit. I mean, as, like as a child that grew up here, I know, and I've seen <laughs> it, and I've watched it throughout the course, from things like Project Funway to um, some of the other big activities that you guys do, and so now with School of Rock kicking off, all kids can have access to music. I think it's brave of you to admit that you you've grown up. <laughs> I'm still working on that, like you know, every day. Might have been a bold statement on my end, <laughs> but yeah, we'll say that. But we we believe children have a right to music and, and arts and education, and um, EFEC is is provides a perfect. I don't know, I, I, not not with stopgap. Uh, you guys provide a. Uh, it's it's a really it's a really cool camp. Um, one because it gives kids the opportunity to work with. Jake, our local Grammy-nominated uh, music teacher and performer and, and somebody who's really great and engages with the kids, but um, it also raises funds that we put back into the classroom. So when kids go back to school in the fall, um, the money that the camp, your, your tuition, your fees, and donations uh, pay for music and arts in the classroom in Eagle County Schools. So it's a really cool win-win. It is. It's great. I believe strongly in the in the ukulele, ukulele, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. Um, the recorders are great, but it's really hard to sing mm -hmm. and play a recorder at the same time, mm -hmm. right? Like that's you know that's that's your letterman bound if you uh, if you can manage to do that. But the ukulele is a, is a great way to get into other stringed instruments, and we teach the kids uh, several things. We're gonna work on some body mechanics this year. We do yoga every year, but uh, I, I feel like stretching is, is an important thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I suffered from a little carpal tunnel and I had to get that adjusted by by these guys. And so yeah, here's the, the shots of the camp. The kids every day are they're learning uh, how to hula hoop if they haven't done that already. Um, they get together and we do some music on the stage. We also kick it off with some yoga in the morning to get the the body and the mind flowing together. We also do some uh, meditation and chanting in the pitches of the keys that uh, the songs are gonna be in for the day. So every day has its like own theme and a uh, certain amount of songs. And so the, you know, the kids are gearing up for performance at the end of the week. Uh, that's the Minturn, um, the stage right there. And, and they're all geared up to, uh, to perform at the end of the week. This, this year we're doing two weeks, which is awesome because uh, we're going to have a, a group of kids, that if they come back for the second week, they'll be a little bit more advanced. Um, something else I've been trying to do for years is, is to tie in the uh, Minturn Community Fund concert on that Thursday night. So we, we got it. I don't know if I told you this, oh, but fantastic. We, we got yeah, it. That's great. Uh, cool. So it's going to be Johnny Schlepper and uh, myself, Schlepp and Wolf, and we're going to have the kids. And the kids from the first week can come back, and the kids from the second week will be there. And we have our performances on Friday. Um, there's all kinds of things that go on at the camp, too. Like the kids get some face painting. It's not music all day. It's really, really hard to put six hours of music into the kids a day. But all the things we do, like the hula hooping, and we get them to play the um, ukulele while they're hula hooping simultaneously, ukulele looping. <laughs> I like it. Patent, <laughs> patent pending on that one. Uh, and it really it opened up their ability to play with more rhythm. Yeah, there you go. There's the, there's she, She's singing, playing, uh, and she hadn't played anything uh, ever in her life. So this is like day four or five, and she's playing the ukulele, singing a song, and hula hooping at the same time. And the kids have a lot of freedom in that they get to choose, you know, what they're going to do. We reach out to the parents in advance and see if we can get, like, some response as to what the kids are listening to. And then the first day, we, we take uh, some suggestions and stuff. And I mean, it, it's, I, I made this camp as if I was going to be in it. 
Right. Because when I was a kid, I was a little disenfranchised. I didn't have great music teachers, sorry. But uh, <laughs> they didn't inspire me. And, I, and whatever we can do to inspire the children to be right. more creative will, I think, result in a less divisive society. Because if the kids are already geared to work together, even if their opinions are different, they still have to come out with an outcome. You're making music. You're making something as a group. And you're coming out with something that you've worked together uh, for, for a long time on. And I think that's very important, especially in today's climate. I think it's very important, and I think it's really cool to watch. So I have identical twin brothers. One of them is really into like sports and athletics, and one of them is really into science and art. And so the one who's always been super into athletics has just recently found this outlet in learning how to play the guitar. And so you can see it, how it helps kids transform. And then you can see that they get to use that creative part of their brain, which uh, is something that I feel like we've been missing so much of. And when you think of art programs and music programs and education foundations, really, those are always the first to go. And it is so incredible that we have such a good education system here, that it's one of those things that we strive so hard to keep. It's true. It's hard to quantify numerically the value of arts, because when you test in math or reading, or English, you have this definitive outcome. Right. But in music, you don't know what it's going to do, or art, or any, any art. Um, you don't know what it's going to do down the road to expand that kid's mind. And because they can't quantify it immediately, like you said, it kind of gets, well, we can, you know, they don't need music this year. We'll give them counseling for whatever <laughs> the problem is, um, you know, right. that we're having in, in the world today. Right, but there are huge studies also that say things like music therapy can help in the grand scheme of things. And so to have just something that's going to help this remain in our community and be part of these kids' upbringing is so magnificent. And this isn't the only thing that you guys do. You continue working on making the kids' education better here, which is something that is so important and so valuable to our community that I feel like it's so important that we get to highlight you guys. Mm, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, you. Wendy kills it. I mean, you, you guys are always helping well, out Well, it's, it's everywhere. all of our future and the next generation. And, um, you know, in Colorado, where we don't fund education the way that it should be, uh, it is, uh, it's really important work. So we're going to keep at it. They crush it. They do. I know they crush it. <laughs> I had the opportunity mm -hmm. to work with these ladies not that long ago. And... Just getting to be in their presence, getting to see how they ran things was such an incredible learning opportunity for me now as a semi-adult. Are you going to come visit this camp? I would really like to. I would really love to have you. We have special guests. Um, there's a couple of those pictures that I shot. Um, you know, Chris Anthony came by one year, and it was before he did the Mangart thing. And, and if you know anything about that, the way he put that together musically was... <laughs> to me, it, that, that's more impressive than the story itself, is that how he wrote a symphony with the symphony and never read a, a, a note of music. And he came to the camp before um, that all went down and was, is, was inspiring the kids on that level. And uh, we have local musicians that come through, touring musicians that come through. People like to throw down and uh, have a good time. The kids get to play with the full bands. They get to see different arrangements. They get to meet you know, different people in the music industry. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It, it, and please. We'll, we'll talk. This is we, not like an on air. Like I'm genuinely. <laughs> I'm doing it. As if we were off camera. Please, like you. We just shook on it on you, live. You TV. would have a hard time <laughs> not having a good time. I don't doubt that. So if people are interested in getting their kids in the program, uh -huh. how can they do so? They should go to our website efec.org, and under programs, there is School of Rock. There's a link there to sign up. And if you have any questions or any problems, just call the phone number at the bottom of our website and I'll help you out. You guys are so incredible. Thank you for all that you do for our community. Thank you for providing the music for the children. We are all out of time, but I really appreciate you guys being here this morning. Thanks, Thanks for Maddie. having us. Yep, we Good to see you. It. See you in a couple weeks. Yeah, you will. We're going to talk about this <laughs> off camera. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Make sure that you go to effect, E-F-E-C dot O-R-G to enroll your kids in this great program because it's just one of those few things that we get to cherish here is how much education we have and how much we have to offer and how incredible it is in our community. We're going to take a short break. When we come back from the break, we're going to introduce you to Chris Botkins.
Welcome back to the scoreboard. Fall sports are right around the corner as Battle Mountain Boys golf team starts their season on August 1st and all other sports launching the following week. Over at Eagle Valley High School, the boys golf team will kick off their season the week of August 8th with softball kicking off short thereafter. It's going to be a great season and the entire scoreboard team will be out in the field covering the action. If you have a story idea, email it to us at scoreboard at tv 8 vale Com. We can't wait to hear from you. As always, visit our website, thescoreboardnation.com, to see content you may have missed. For Maddie Evans, I am Blake O'Ruling, and we will see you all next time right here on The Scoreboard.